analyse my case, Johnston. Uh, what case? The case that you owe me. I don't have it. Sorry? I don't have it. What? On you? Or at all? Answer me! I trusted you, Joseph. Thought you had a good head on your shoulders. Thought you were smart. What's happened? Bale Brothers? They can do these sort of jobs for me. But you can't, clearly. First job? Second. Second? Oh, I see. So, just run me through, Joseph, because I'm a little lost. What happened to my case? Well, we went to the pub to celebrate yesterday. The job was done, but... You took my case to the pub? It was safe. You've got three hours to bring that case back to me. I knew what would happen to me if I didn't return his precious case. A few bruises, a few cuts, a few broken bones, a body bag. I had to find it. I thought the bar would be the best place to start, seeing as it's the only place I seem to remember. But when I got there, it was a different barman. I wasn't here yesterday. Sorry about that. Cheers, anyway. It's cool. So you had a rough night? Yeah, something like that. Well, you should have been here drinking still. Well, it helps. You sound depressed. Do you want to talk about it? It's private. You can't help me. And how can you be sure? A sweet thing like you shouldn't be offering to help a guy like me. You don't even know my name, let alone my problems. It's Joseph. I heard you talking to the guy at the bar. Maybe you should go back to your fellow over there. He's not my fella. I don't have a fella. Then why are you here? helps. So are you going to tell me or not? It's private. I'm good with secrets. You could get hurt. I'm sure they'll protect me. You don't know me. Not yet. I never asked the poor girl to help, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. And with just under two hours to spare, I wasn't going to argue. I needed all the help I could get. It took a while to walk to my apartment, but she didn't seem to mind. She kept asking a lot of questions to pass the time, asking me about what I do, if I'd ever carried out a job like this before, if I'm scared of the big boss. She seemed such a lovely woman. I wondered to myself if she'd ever want to go out for a drink with me after all this is over, presuming I'd survive. one of the flats around here. I do, I live on floor six. I thought so. I thought I'd remember a place like yours. As would I. Edna. Edna, that's a beautiful name for a beautiful girl. Oh, well, thank you. Joseph. There was something about this woman, so mysterious, so dangerous, I felt hypnotised. Are you alright? Sorry, what? You look a bit puzzled. Joseph, have you found it yet? No, not yet. Um, who's this? I'm Edna, I live in one of the apartments above. Oh, so, um, you know Joseph? No, 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 we just met. Oh, how, how lovely. We should go. Do I know you from somewhere? No. no I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, Penny, right? 
Hold on. Are you free Tuesday? Well, you would be in a minute. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset your lady. Oh, she isn't my lady. Oh. Well, in that case, come by my apartment later, say 10. Okay, that sounds great. I'll be there. Sounds great. I'm so glad she had asked. I don't think I could have had the courage to ask her myself. But in order to see her later, I had to find the case. Penny had left. I was all alone. Still no case, and only 48 minutes till death do us part. I had checked my whole apartment, every drawer, every cupboard, everywhere that you could fit a suitcase. I knew it wasn't here. I kept convincing myself that the Bell brothers had it, and hoping that they would have already returned it to Lawliot. Sadly, I didn't feel as if luck was on my side. But even though I was potentially facing death, I couldn't seem to get her out of my head. Edna.